My name is Scott Forsyth. This is week four of a 52-week series on various web admin tools, tips, and technologies. The command line has been a core part of Windows since, well, before Windows, in fact, back in MS-DOS days, and it's still in regular use today. So today I'm covering three tips and tricks for capturing the output of the command line. Uh, for example, have you ever tried to capture some data from the command line and tried to have a hard time getting that into an email or a Word doc? Well, if so, today, hopefully I can make this a lot easier for you. So let's jump right in. Uh, the first of the three, actually there's three today I want to cover. Uh, clip, and then we have a couple, uh, we'll call it a greater than sign, I'm not sure the formal name, and then we have copy and paste. And there's actually, copy and paste is not as easy as it used to be, so I'll cover the three of these. Uh, so the first one is clip. And actually this is very useful, and a lot of people aren't aware of it, and one of the reasons is it's actually brand new with Windows Server 2003 and also with Vista. It wasn't available in XP or before. And basically, clip, it's really easy. Uh, what you want to do is sometimes you take a large list and you want to just drop it into your Windows clipboard, and then you can paste it into Notepad or your email or wherever you want to do. So let's get an example of a real large list. Let's do System32, and notice if I do a dir, this is huge, very long. So Let's do a dir, how about, let's do a slash od, order by date, and now here's what you do. Do a pipe clip, and you can do this on virtually all command line lines output, and the pipe key, it's above your enter, so shift, and your key above your enter to your like up sideways vertical dash is kind of what it is. So I hit enter on this, and notice how fast it is because it doesn't have to render it to the screen. Let's go in notepad here, and paste. And there you go. The entire output, you can see your line breaks are retained. And it's all there for you. So, again, clip. And you can do this with pretty well any type of command and just add your pipe clip at the end. So, for example, dir, let's do a help on dir. Drop that into your clip. And there you go. Now you have your, your help for the command line. The second trick is what I've always called piping the command line output, although I'm not sure if that's the correct name or not. And it's similar to the clip, except that you use basically the greater than sign, and you can pipe it to a file instead. So, let's take an example here. How about ipconfig all? Notice it's pretty verbose. There's quite a bit of information here. And we want to get this to the command line, let's say. And so what we do here is we just use the greater than sign and a text. So let's say ipconfig.txt. And again, it's very fast. It's a notepad, ipconfig.txt. And there you have it. Now, the other option we have here is a double, double greater than sign. And this will append rather than replace. So let's actually let's do this again. And in fact, here's, let me show you a better example. Let's do an echo hello world. And we're going to pipe this to test.txt. So now let's do notepad. And let me show you a side thing, unrelated. If I hit the tab key, and I can loop through these as well. So the tab is the autocomplete that you may notice me doing fairly often. Okay, so I hit enter on here. I have the hello world. If I run this again, and again, and again, and again, by the way, up arrow lets you loop, leap, uh, leaf through previous commands. Now if I go notepad test.txt, notice there's just the one. So it replaced it every single time. Now let's try the double greater than sign, double pipe it. And let's run this a number of times. And let's say hello world new notepad. And let's do test. And notice every time it appended it rather than replaced it. And also it's no problem at all using the double pipe to a file that doesn't yet exist yet. And it'll create it for you. So again, test2, notepad, test2.txt. And there you have it. Okay, so the second one is you can output it to the command line uh, like so. And the third one is copy and paste. Now you're used to copy and paste, most likely. You can select an area here in something like Notepad, pretty well any Windows application, and Control C, or you can right click on it, and copy is C, cut is X, and paste is V. So you know, select all with Control A, Control X, Control V, I pasted it back, or Control V a whole bunch of times. Notice the scroll bar changing. Okay, so that's a basic 101 copy and paste. But how do we do this in the command line? So if I, uh, I left this at the default 
settings at the moment. And so let's go here. If I do pictor, oh, let's say test asterisk dot asterisk. So this lists everything with test in it. So it has the two files I just used previously. And so now what I can do, notice if I drag and drop here, it's useless. It's not doing anything for us. And this actually changed in Windows XP. And the reason is for compatible programs prior to then, or incompatible programs, was the default changed. So what I do, there's a couple different ways to do it, but my preferred is hitting your top corner here. I go to properties and I switch to quick edit mode here and hit OK. And then depending on which operating system you have, you may get an additional prompt that says, do you want to make this apply to just this command line or all? And I'll usually select all. And I, I change this one of the first things I do. So as soon as I do that, notice now you can copy. Now, what you're going to do is notice it's, it doesn't have line breaks and basically it's just a block of text or block of letters, characters here. So if I'm going to hit enter and notice it's not control C, you hit the enter key to capture this. And if I paste this, there you have it. And now notice there's no, the carriage returns are immediately at the square block attack. So it's sometimes going to be a little bit messed up for you. You have to manually insert your carriage returns. But this is how you do that. So again, in your drop down properties, turn on quick edit mode. And as soon as you do that, you can now copy and paste anything that you see here from the command line. So there you have it, three tricks, simple, uh, but they're very powerful and very useful to be able to capture the output from the command line. Thank you, hope you tune in again next week.